mites or all the beetles get down there and get knocked out. The bees will actually chase them right in there, go to hide, they drop in the oil on the ground. Do you put that on the top or the bottom chamber? In the bottom. In the top, I'll put one of these. Depending on the load, now I see a lot. I'll put probably two or three in there, chop them out real quick. I don't want to go in there with a couple of things. Yeah. Roger's got a question, Stan. Beetle trap. Beetle trap. South African high beetle trap. Stan. That's only one variety. Yes, sir. I've had a couple of times where I uh, go in and my feeders will have white larvae swimming around into it. Is that beetle or black pot? Swimming around in your shirt? Yeah. It's like a worm, mm -hmm. white little worm. That's probably your mm -hmm. South African high beetle. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other week, the other week, I did have that, and I did see a beetle in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, if you see one, you got more. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, they're in the top bar, the top feeders, yeah. and they're just swimming around. I take it out and dump yeah. it out. They start out in South Jersey when a commercial got a beetle yeah. bringing up their bees mm -hmm. from down south. Yeah. Of course, down yeah. south they well, always have them. It looks like uh, and they were brought in down there. Before. And uh, what happens is uh, they're coming north every year a little bit more and more. They like to live in sandy soil, so South Jersey is an ideal spot. When they were doing the blueberry and cranberry pollination, they all came in like they had 16,000 colonies of bees coming for pollination every year, 160,000 something like that. And these migratory guys bring the stuff from. Florida all the way to Maine, and then Maine of course to California, so it's spread, you know, with the migratory beach, okay. so there's no control over it, that's their bread and butter, they make a living. So, evidently it comes to us, and then we have to worry about the long run, we got to treat them. So, there's other varieties out there, there's one made in Australia, it's all plastic, it's reusable, but I think these are about the best way to go, about the cheapest. You can throw them away, or, you know. Stan, one of the same thing. Okay. Okay. Well, I wouldn't hurt. I'd just leave it. If it gets too cold in the wintertime, you should leave it. Oh, yeah. But in the yeah. springtime, yeah. Yeah. The try to get it out before the winter. Okay. Okay. You can, but I mean, if it's trapped in there, it's cold, you can't like, get wow. through it. Wow. No, I get it. I don't know. I do get it. Like, wow, man. Definitely get treated. You don't want them in there. Well, it's like You'd be surprised at how many people are in there today. I've seen them in the program already where this thing was like three quarters full of people. Where the guy had hundreds and hundreds of people in there down south. What's your name? Anything else? What's your name? Okay. Do you leave your uh, your frame Sometimes I do, yes. If I can't get to them and take them out, I'll leave them in there. Yeah. No, I'll just use it early spring for feeding. It's a light colony. Yeah. February start feeding. Okay. Do you put any insulation on the top? Or you leave. Oh. Yeah, get them ready for winter. My inner cover. I got my inner cover on there. And I got, notice my mouse guard's got as much air as they can get. We use full ventilation. All right? Because that air has to circulate and come up through, especially with New Jersey, all the humidity we have. So I have two sticks that I brought with me. I want to see the half boundary. Two sticks or stones or whatever, and it's in that article that... Uh, he had it in the journal right there, you can see that. And I raise it up like this, you can cut a notch in there too. But uh, I was making them with the notches and people said they don't want the notch, so we make them without the notch. If you want the notch, you put your notch in yourself. I prefer not to use the notch myself, uh, because that way I can just prop these up and I can close them when I need it. And I, otherwise the bees won't get in there to rob <laughs> when I'm doing my feeding. And what I'll do is then I'll put the roof on there like this. So we got the roof on there for the winter. Push it all the way forward. Make sure you get your fingers underneath there, and you got the ventilation. It's up there. This should be right up there. Yeah. Okay. Like Stick stones, whatever. You want to raise it up at least you know, five inches, <coughs> an inch or so, a little bit better. I just pick up sticks on the ground this and throw them around. But there are guys that uh, will put the regular height in there and leave it in there. They'll nail it in or glue it in or whatever. Then they go reverse the cover. But then you go reverse the cover. You've got to take them out. This way, you just take the sticks, throw them on the ground. But two more next time it comes through. But you definitely want that ventilation. You got to have that air circle. I've taken off the roof already, and I've seen this cover. When I lifted it off, it was you know the deep side up for the winter. You know, springtime, like this, where the bees come through there. I've taken off my roof, my inner cover, and I've taken the lid off like this. And this is all full of water, mm -hmm. droplets of water. And guess what? Your queen is right up here in this second story now. She's laying eggs right in the center here. 
And what it does, it creates mm -hmm. hypothermia. The cool, wet, night damps, you know, in the winter time that we get early spring, we got so much moisture and wet weather here, the humidity, it's like the Amazon, you'd say. Uh, all this is full of water. It'll actually get mildew, and all bacteria start to grow. You don't want that. Again, you want the sticks in there to eliminate that problem. Have it well vented. The bees aren't going to die in cold weather. They wear them over in Canada, minus 30 degrees. But they do wrap them, but they're still out there as minus 30, and they're doing fine. But the ventilation, the humidity is what will do a number on hypothermia. That's the, that's the winter position for that board? This is the winter position, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. The winter position is the deep side down so they can traverse freely across all these things. Okay. okay. Now, what I do um, for mine is, <coughs> is a couple of things. And Stan, Stan will cover this too, I think. And that is the old uh, sugar. I put sugar in the inner lid. Yeah. Okay, which means that the, the deep side will go up in that case because you're utilizing it as you would beef on it. Okay, well, then what I do is I use a, lot, a medium or small super. Now, the medium or the small super will be the wind break for the bee candy. And I put the bee candy right by the vent on top of some popsicle sticks, and I make a horseshoe of the, uh, the sugar. Okay, now, the sugar's there for a couple of reasons. Before I got and, you know, made the bee candy, okay, which saved my bees last March, what I did was I had sugar in there, and the sugar is hygroscopic. What that means is a uh, chemical loves water. It'll draw water to them. That water come up, okay? I've actually seen what he's seen with this. Only this part here, because I had it vented prop or tilted, this part here was loaded up with water, and there was an ice cube that sat up here about this big. So I just took it and dumped it out. It caused me to check every single one of my hives for that reason. Right, but I put the sugar here, and then I have, of course, a notch so that the bees can breathe. Because if you seal that off, it's a, a sand, like a sand seal. So what you want to do is make a, make a notch with a little saw and chisel it out with a screwdriver. Bang, you got your notch. So don't forget your sugar if you want to do it. Like he was saying there, I do this in February, January. I get out there, usually around Celestia's time. They just start getting a little bit longer. The bees know it. They start getting more active. The queens lay more eggs. But she starts laying this second week of Jan, second week of uh, January. And I will take the uh, inner cover, like you say, it's down like this for the winter. But come January now, for me, January is springtime. January, early February, right? I take the cover, flip it over, and I have a bucket of granulated sugar, and I just fill this whole thing up with sugar, solid right up to the top. Fill that whole deep side up with sugar, and the bees will absorb that moisture, like Charlie said. It'll absorb all that moisture, get rid of that humidity that's underneath that cover because it's going to have right in here. And this sugar acts as a absorbent, absorb all that moisture. And the bees will come right up through the inner cover, and they'll actually eat all the way around, right up to the corner, like I said before. Then I just put another, more sugar on there and fill it up again. It acts as an insulator and absorbs that moisture. Now, this is only for New Jersey, not that I've found out it works. So, with the sugar on, the top, on that top board, do you also put a grain feeder in? Well, uh, if the weather uh, in the winter, if the spring, uh, if the weather is above freezing uh, in the evening, yeah, I will put the feed on. If it's still cold and it freezes at night, don't put the feed on. Don't feed them. Gotta wait until it warms up. They're not gonna take cold sugar, and you're gonna disturb them by that. I wouldn't let them do that. Uh, later on in the spring, though, when the weather gets warmer, and the nights aren't down to the freezing point, you'll get up into the 40s and 50s at night. Then go ahead and start feeding your liquid and go away from the dry sugar before you find it. Then go to your liquid. Dry is for stripping like the Yeah, yeah. Fill up the inner cover now with sugar. Yeah. Like I said, your deep side be down now for the winter. In December, January. Then if it's light, you want to flip it over. See the moisture in the humidity? Flip it over. It'll still get up in there. And fill this up with dry sugar. So leave the hole open so they can come up. And they need a ventilation because you have to there's two sticks in here for ventilation, right? Just like that. This will be all full of sugar. And put your roof on. Okay? Okay. Talk about the ventilation should be at the front of the hive. Don't create the chimney effect. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, I don't think you said that loud enough that people... The other thing is, I think what Albert wanted to know was, about like those foam insulations and or people use burlap bags with stuff in it. Can you yeah. can you talk about that type of setup? Because I think that's what he was looking for. You do the, you do the insulation on the outside or inside? 
I don't do it, I was just asking it, but that's what you're saying. I saw like the uh, pink uh, insulation on top, you make yeah. sure you, you uh, carve out a hole so they can go in and out, right? Yeah, people do that, yeah. Okay. I didn't do it myself. I, I just wanted to know if you had done that. So. Roger has a neat Roger way has doing it. Uh, I can yeah. take uh, burlap bags and put wood shavings from my planer into it, put yeah. that up there in insulation, that absorbs the moisture. Yeah. My opinion is a, a foam or plastic up on top of there. Yeah. It's not going to absorb any moisture, no, it won't. so it can still condensate there. Yeah, the sugar will. But with these uh, burlap bags, that absorbs the moisture. When I take that out in the spring and I put the bag of sugar up on top of the water, so there's your answer. You also have a ventilated cover that you have.